Okay, so hello and welcome everyone. This is video two, or chronologically three, if you count my earlier extensive form game video, which is from actually the same document, <laughs> responding to a question that I'd received about extensive form games and subgame perfect Nash Equilibrium. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a three player game and I am going to show the subgame perfect Nash Equilibrium in this game. So suppose we have player one who's going to select A, B, or C. Then we have player two who moves after player one is selected A, but not after B or C. And if player two is called upon to play, player two can select D, E, or F. And then there's player three who's called upon to play. If player one selects C, player three can select G or H. And then we have the payoffs. Well, and then if player one selects B, then the game ends. Payoffs are going to be uh, the first one goes to player one, the second one goes to player two, the third one goes to player three. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find subgames because my goal is to solve by subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. So remember, subgame, a subgame is going to uh, require that we are including the node and then all subsequent nodes. So you can't cross information sets. And so that's okay because it's okay here because when player two is called upon to play or player three is called upon to play, these are separate information sets. And so uh, where would that be a problem? Suppose you were gonna do, suppose you were going to, uh, suppose you were gonna model the, the extensive form version of the standard prisoner's dilemma which is simultaneously timed. So you'd have a dashed line because the second player doesn't know if the first player has selected to cooperate or defect. And so there'd be just a single sub game, actually no proper sub games in the, in the standard, in the extensive form game version of the standard prisoner's dilemma. And that's not an issue, issue here. We have three players. We have, uh, we have different information sets that are following player one's choice. We have three sub games. We have the whole game trivially, and then we have this sub game, we have this sub game. Great, so in terms of finding Nash equilibrium, remember the way that we, we, we're working here is first we're gonna identify all the Nash equilibria for the game, then we're gonna pair away the ones that are not sequentially rational, we're gonna pair away the ones that are not sub game perfect, that are, that are not stipulating Nash play in every sub game, and then that'll leave us with the sub game perfect Nash equilibrium. In this game, it turns out there's three Nash equilibrium. And, it, and so if you saw my previous video where I was introduce, introducing subgame perfect Nash equilibrium and I showed how you could do this by representing a matrix for each subgame, uh, it actually turns out like solving by finding Nash equilibria by matrix isn't, I don't, that's not the way that I wanna do it <clears throat> because we have three players. And so, to, and the way that they that they interact. So usually, okay, so if you have a matrix game and you have two players, one has rows, one has columns. If you have three players, you can have two separate matrices. So then player three selects which matrix you're playing in. Player one and two, or the other two players select the columns or rows. If you have four players, well, you could have one player selects rows, another selects columns, another selects which matrix you're playing, and then the fourth selects which chalkboard you're playing, right? So you can see how this pretty quickly boils down to something kind of ridiculous. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do instead to find my Nash equilibrium is take to heart the definition of a Nash equilibrium. So a strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium if no player has a profitable unilateral deviation. So I've enumerated the strategy profiles uh, ADG, ADH, and so on. So we have a whole bunch of strategy profiles. So I'm just looking at what are strategy profile takes a strategy from each player. So in this case, it's got to be a triple. If we had two players, it would be it'd be uh, uh, just a just a pair. And if you had n players, it'd be an n tuple. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to see among among these strategy profiles are any Nash. Well, uh, suppose, so I'm gonna say, are any, Nash, are any of these strategy profiles Nash equilibrium where player one selects A? Okay, so if player one selects A, then we're gonna disregard player three's choices. And so we'll allow that to be free to vary. If player one selects A, disregard three for a moment, except to the extent that a different choice by three makes one avoid A. So 
if we have player one selecting A, player two must choose F, player three must choose G. So AFG is Nash. So player two must choose F, and player three must choose G. Oh, what happens if player two doesn't choose F? Well, then they're not doing Nash, right? Because player two, maximize, conditional on player one selecting A, player two maximizes their payoff by selecting F, right? And then we require that player three chooses G. Why? Because otherwise player one would want to deviate. So this would not be a Nash equilibrium if uh, if player, so A, there's no Nash equilibrium where player one selects A, player two selects F, and player three selects H. Why? Because A would have a profitable unilateral deviation to C, right, to get this two. Okay, so is there a Nash equilibrium where player one selects B? Well, if player one selecting B and getting zero here must be the case that it doesn't want to switch to A or C, so player two must choose E, then definitely, uh, player one would would uh, uh, definitely player one would would uh, avoid uh, would avoid playing a and then player three must choose G so player three chooses G yeah because uh, one is bigger here and uh, yeah they can't they can't improve because um, right so we're so we're good there and then do we have a Nash equilibrium where one selects C three must select G in this case. So three must select G. If one chooses C, three must choose G. Why? Well, then one can't gain by deviating and two must choose E. So two would get uh, one, yeah, because otherwise, uh, otherwise we'd have, somebody would have an incentive to deviate. Okay, so we have three Nash equilibrium, A, F, G, A, F, G, uh, B, E, G, and then C, E, G. Now of these, only A, F, G is subgame perfect. Uh, and so let's see, well, what's going on here is we're requiring that, we're requiring that the strategy profile is uh, stipulating Nash play in all subgames, and that's only happening in AFG. So we, we can see this by backward induction. So Nash, let's look at Nash play in subgames. So in this subgame, what's player two gonna do? Well, Nash play for player two involves playing F. Nash play for player three involves selecting G, right? Because one is bigger than minus one. And then if player one looks forward, they're gonna compare one, zero, and zero. Player one has to choose A. So the so A F G is consistent with Nash play in all subgames. So within this subgame, this first one, Nash play required player two to select F. Within this subgame, Nash play required player G to, or three to select G. And then our backward induction solution is A F G. And for this class of games, subgame perfect Nash equilibrium and backward induction are going to coincide. Okay, so this is kind of interesting because this gives us a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in an extensive form game involving three players where each of the two players, or well, each each of the players following player one control their own subgame, which I think is a fascinating structure. And you can give lots of interesting economic in, or economic scenarios uh, that, a, that follow from this, such as you have a manager and then two potential workers who are, that you're, you're choosing which one to delegate a task to, for, in, for instance. And there's numerous other things, but that's the one that came to mind just right now. Okay, so I'll go ahead and conclude here, um, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.